Remember that scene in Knight Rider where Michael took his hands off the wheel and Kit drove itself onto a semi-truck? EVs can't do all that, but some can drive money into your pocket with incentives. The EV upgrades coming up on January 1st, 2024 are so nice. More vehicles are eligible for the $7,500 new EV money with consideration made as to where the car was made and where the battery minerals and components were sourced. If you like money, listen up. In 2024, you may get your tax credit at the dealership. Oh yeah, that's cash up front. VW has sign then drive, but with these incentives, you'll sign, drive, and get paid. Before you hit the gas pedal, or is it electric pedal? I don't know. You'll want to know some details that are the strings attached. But I would much rather buy a used EV to avoid the new car tax. In 2024, you'll get up to a $4,000 incentive on used electric cars. But again, there are some catches you'll want to know. There's more to these incentives, including how you qualify or which cars are eligible. But first, let's talk about who the big winners are. One of them may even surprise you. There are three primary winners of electric car incentives. I used to drive 19,000 miles yearly, which pales in comparison to some realtors driving more than 30,000 miles a year. That much driving highlights the financial benefits of driving an electric car. But what does that mean in terms of dollars and cents? For that, we can turn to the Drone Quote EV Calculator to demonstrate how high mileage drivers would benefit significantly from the EV incentives. You can click the link below to access the calculator and run your own numbers. Now, for instance, let's pull one of the lower numbers from the screenshot I showed you a moment ago, 32,500 miles driven per year, and see how a $7,500 EV incentive can generate even more money in your pocket via fuel savings. For comparison, we'll use the Tesla Model 3 with a 350 mile range and compare it to a 2023 Toyota Camry Hybrid with a combined 52 MPGs. Let's plug in an average fuel price of 337 a gallon as of November 16th, 2023, and an average cost of electricity in the US of 15.93 cents per kilowatt hour. That right there is a 35% savings in fuel costs, which I feel was a pretty conservative estimate. Gas and electricity are much higher in a lot of places. The next winner can save even more. The gas guzzler. Did you even know there was such a gas guzzler tax? Well, I didn't until we started working on this video. If anything, I would have thought it was just the extra pain you feel every time you go to the pump. But no, it's a real thing. The gas guzzler tax kicks in if your car gets less than 22.5 MPG. If you fall into that category, you may gain even more from the EV incentives, especially if you also drive a lot. Let's revisit the example I gave you with a Camry. How conservative do you think I was being with those numbers? Most people's gas is more than $3.37 per gallon, and most people's MPG is lower than 52, making the EV incentive even more beneficial. Replace the 52 with a 22.5, and the numbers look even better. Now add the $7,500 EV incentive for new cars and $4,000 EV incentive for used cars, and it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't. It makes dollars but not as many dollars as the biggest winners of these new incentives. They're cleaning up. Any guess on who's going to be raking in all that dough? I'm talking about billions of dollars worth of the American electric vehicle market. I'm also talking about a group responsible for job creation, global trading, and economic contributions to the country. That's right the vehicle manufacturers that make these electric vehicles. Now you might say, hold on one moment, 
these incentives are only going to the pockets of the manufacturers. Well, yes, you can argue that, but they're also growing their workforce for those purposes in the United States. In the bigger picture, these incentives benefit the American workforce, their families, and surrounding communities. Or in other words, America. It sounds like a win-win situation for both vehicle manufacturers and consumers. Next, let's look at which vehicles are eligible for the incentive because if you don't like the options, what good are the incentives? That raises the question, would Marty's DeLorean qualify for the EV incentive? I mean, it is over two years old and it runs on gigawatts. What do you think? But for real, here are the EVs on the list. Oof. I know, there's a lot. For the entire list, click on the link in the description. Behind the list of eligible EVs, there's also a set of rules. If you're eyeing something as fancy as James Bond's ride, think again. You must keep the price under 80 grand for most EVs and 55 grand for sedans. The car must also be an electric or plug-in hybrid with the final assembly completed in North America. Some rules on the battery and its build materials can also make or break eligibility. These batteries must be manufactured in North America with 40% of minerals and 50% of other battery components sourced from the US or free trade partners. By the way, those percentage mandates increase every year. Even with all these rules, there's one EV on the list I really like and I think you might too. My favorite car on the list is a used EV, which will also get the incentive next year, but what makes a used EV eligible for the incentives? You've got to check the model year, the price tag, and the battery size. It must be at least two years old and cost less than 25 grand and have at least a seven kilowatt hour battery. Plus, the car is eligible only once as a used EV and must weigh less than seven tons. Just like yo, that's a big EV. But the eligibility details are even bigger. The new EV tax credit is worth $7,500, but how much of that money you get depends on you. That starts with having enough income to have a tax liability that is at least the full tax credit amount. If you can't use the total value, you can't roll it over. For new EVs, if you file single and earn up to 150K, you're good. If you're married and filing jointly, keep it under 300K. For used EVs, the tax credit is worth a savory $4,000. Income limits are 75K or 112.5 if you file as a head of household. Speaking of savory, when I go to a restaurant and order a nice, juicy steak, I love it when they ask me how I would like it made. Mm -mm. That incentive sounds just as delicious. So how would you like your money served? In cold, hard cash. But before devouring that tempting EV tax incentive, you'll need to place an order on the menu called IRS Form 8936. You currently file that form with your federal taxes the year after buying an EV. How would you feel if you could take the tax credit at the time of purchase right off the price? Beginning January 1st, 2024, you may even be able to claim your tax credit at the point of sale. But here's the question. Are these incentives a win-win for both parties or are the scales tipped in the favor of dealers? Let us know what you think in the comments. Now check this out. You know how Mario can get the mushroom power up to become bigger? Well, some states offer additional perks to increase the EV incentive. But don't worry if you don't like shrooms because only 19 states offer additional EV incentives. In some states, their EV incentive is as high as $7,500. In other states, you can drive in the carpool lane by yourself without getting pulled over. Click on the link in the description for the complete list of state incentives. But before you head out to purchase an EV, how would you feel about hitting the subscribe button 
if you think we did a good job sharing what we learned about electric vehicle incentives. If you're wondering what else you could do with a big ass EV battery, check out this video here to learn how some EVs can power your home in the event of an outage. Or if you have solar, check out this video so you can know why you shouldn't charge your car with solar in real time.